Hey guys, Josh here with Crypto Y'all, and today I'm going to show you what makes Bitcoin so special. And I'm going to talk about the three pillars that Bitcoin or really makes up Bitcoin. But before we get into that, what I need you to do is please subscribe to this channel. If you're a crypto curious person, I need you to subscribe to the channel. Give me a like. Hey, even give me a comment if you find this to be a helpful video. And in the links below, I'm going to uh, put a link to my crypto investing checklist that's got me about a 2,300% ROI since 2018. And if you're jumping into crypto and you need a little guidance, or maybe you just need some confidence or a starting block to push off from, there's a great checklist that I use to vet cryptocurrency projects and possible uh, investment opportunities. So without further ado, subscribe, like, grab the checklist, and stay tuned for this video. Hey guys, wanted to do a short, quick video on Bitcoin and uh, the three pillars really of Bitcoin. And so, so that we understand kind of the granddaddy of crypto and what Bitcoin characteristics are that make it special. Why is it that we follow it wherever it goes? Why do all the other things follow its valuation? All that good stuff. And it's important to just kind of know the DNA of, of Bitcoin. Um, you know, specifically the Bitcoin blockchain. The, the blockchain technology uh, supports the Bitcoin network, and it's extremely secure, uh, so much so that organizations all over the world, major financial institutions, et cetera, uh, are seriously looking at it, not just for financial transactions, but for their supply chain uh, processes and security and storage and all kinds of stuff, uh, utilities as well. And so in this video, we're just going to be breaking down the three pillars of uh, the blockchain technology behind Bitcoin and really the way other you can so that you can understand how other cryptocurrencies are modeling or what it's model, modeling after. And these also act as like litmus tests as well, almost like purity checks on other projects that you're thinking about investing in. Uh, for example, what the first pillar of the Bitcoin blockchain is the decentralization pillar. Okay, so uh, before the invention of blockchain, most transactions over the internet involve uh, a central server, right? Like this makes sense to us in our internet history. The server stored all the essential data uh, that supported the service that it provided. And a good example of this is like the banking system. You know, your bank stores your money. And when you need to pay someone, uh, you have to use them and they charge you for that service. Um, client server technology is everywhere online. When you use a search engine to find something that you look for, uh, it ends up, your, your query ends up on a, on a central server, which then dispatches the information uh, that you asked for. And the problem with the, with the client server is that there are a number of vulnerabilities. For example, um, the biggest and most obvious of these is that everything is stored in one place. This makes a central service, a server, uh, a real target for hackers uh, and malicious people. Um, number two, if there are any operational issues with a central server, the whole system grinds to a halt. Um, uh, number three, the data held on a central server can be compromised, which shuts down the whole operation. Uh, you, you've seen this before, either in headlines or even maybe in your own place of work or uh, maybe with an Amazon Web Service server or whatever, um, a third-party app that you use online that goes down, like that's one of, that's the vulnerabilities kicking in. So the solution to these centralized vulnerabilities is decentralization, the decentralization pillar, which um, allows us with decentralization, it allows us to build a network where all the computers uh, or on the network have the same information stored on them. So there's massive redundancy 
Um, if you want to interact with someone else on a decentralized network, you can do this without any third party interventions. Um, and you can send and receive, for example, Bitcoin without the use of a bank or a, a centralized server, which is a massive characteristic of Bitcoin is this decentralization. I can bypass the Fortune 500 bank and the government to send you Bitcoin. Uh, the next pillar is the transparency pillar. So a lot of people don't fully understand the concept of transparency when it comes to blockchain technology. Um, and you got to ask the question, isn't, isn't the Bitcoin network supposed to be private? And the answer is yes, but it's also a public, uh, it, it, it's a public ledger for verification purposes. And, the, and, and it, that it's public and private at the same time, which is a really unique feature that it can have. You see, you need to understand the concept of public and private keys. A public key is used on the blockchain to show that you have made a transaction. Your private key is never shared. Um, it's linked to your public key to make the transaction valid. So with Bitcoin, blockchain, the blockchain technology inside of Bitcoin, you can see the public keys associated with all transactions. Um, but they provide a layer of anonymity, almost like a camouflage on top of the private keys. And no other financial system has ever had this kind of transparency. I mean, just think about it. You, you never uh, are able to see um, uh, Wells Fargo's transactions out in the open, right? All of the bank accounts, the money going in and out of them, uh, the people buying stuff with their debit cards. You never see publicly those trades or those, those, in, those, those transactions. So there's a... a um, a much needed level of accountability with blockchain that financial institutions, um, they want. Uh, and, and when you have a blockchain that's, uh, or public addresses or public keys, you can view all of those transactions made using that one particular key. And so a lot of financial institutions are looking at blockchain because, uh, or blockchain technology because of this, because, but, but some are concerned that it's going to push their, it's going to force their hand to reveal all their transactions. And Wall Street doesn't like that. They like that ability to kind of keep their secret moves secret and their manipulations um, to themselves. The last pillar is the immutability pillar. So blockchain technology creates immutable records, okay? This means that after verifying a transaction, you can't change it. Once your transaction is added to the blockchain, there's no turning back. Like you can't claw it back. You can't call it back. You can't push it back, pull it back, anything like that. You cannot reverse transactions on blockchain. So the immutability in blockchain technology comes from the, crypto, the cryptographic uh, hash functionality, which is where you, where you, the the root word obviously of crypto, is cryptographic, and that functionality, uh, the blockchain system takes input strings of any length and converts these to an output string of a fixed length. So the Bitcoin blockchain uses a highly secure SHA two fifty six algorithm. And so the blockchain ends up being basically a, a linked list of transactions. And each block has a hash pointer connecting it to the previous block. And if a hacker tries to change the details of a block, it will affect the entire blockchain, which is impossible to do. So the immutability is the part of, or is the pillar that uh, has prevented blockchain from being hacked for almost 14 or 15 years now. it's uh, It's been an impenetrable fortress of technology so far when it comes to hacking. But you can take that, for example, and look at some altcoin projects that try to mimic Bitcoin as a decentralized um, blockchain or technology, but they're really just software companies. And they're launching in a centralized fashion with founders and controllers and people who have um, 
um, well, control over the project. And what's happening is you're starting to see these projects that are centralized try to move into a decentralized environment. Those who do usually succeed and those who don't are successful only because they have really talented founders or a really, really strong community or there's a utility that is so awesome that people just like turn the other, they turn a blind eye to the fact that it's not decentralized, all of that. These three things about Bitcoin, though, make Bitcoin very special, very unique, and uh, almost irreplicable. But um, that's a debate that we can have openly in the marketplace. Hope this was helpful. Those are the three pillars of the Bitcoin blockchain that you'll see in the crypto universe over and over again. See ya.